You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. boys and girls, citizens of the world. Indeed. Welcome to another podcast talking about drones. <laughs> In case you were wondering. Shocker. That's right. Welcome to the show. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is, by the way, episode number 592. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We know you have a lot of things that can take up your time and you're hanging with us, so we appreciate it. Thank you for the reviews, by the way. Thank you for everyone who's been picking up the books. It's kind of hard to believe that we published two books, working on our third and fourth right now, believe it or not. And for those of you wondering, will I be a part of the Drone You Elite? You'll find out soon. Oh, wow. Bum, bum, bum. See, even I don't know. what. Uh, me neither. I just kind of said that. <laughs> <laughs> even though I know I'm in control of choosing the people. <laughs> so... A lot of people are just like, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do well, it? Well, it's something that we need to do soon. I plan on doing it next week. Cool. So I have a list of people right now. How many? Um, 12. Okay. So 12 I'll peeps. give you one person who's on the list. Let me hear it. Let him hear it. Let her hear it. I don't know. It could be a she. Vic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> All right, let's hear that question. <laughs> yeah, I think Vic's actually probably even beyond that, so that doesn't Everyone count. probably was like, is it me, is it me, is it me, is it me? I could just hear John and Keenan and Andrew and everyone just being like, wait, is that me? All right, here we go. We're going to play the question. Okay. Hey, guys, this is Chris from New England Sky Solutions in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, where we have about 16 inches of snow on the ground right now. Uh, perfect time to stay in and study, listen to Drone You podcasts, and also... Uh, do the the courses in preparation for my uh, 107 test I'm taking this Friday. Hopefully by the time this airs, I'll have the new uh, certificate fresh in my hands or or maybe hanging up on the fridge with a uh, with a magnet. Um, pretty much in the the wobbly little deer phase of getting my LLC off the ground. But my question is about equipment. Uh, the the Phantom 4 Pro seems like a no brainer um, as probably the core of of my business. But one of the other things I was looking at um, to supplement the Phantom 4 is to get maybe an older uh, Phantom or a maybe an Alltel X-Star, something where I could uh, swap the uh, the sensor package off um, in case I want to do different kinds of jobs. Um, I saw that FLIR had a new camera coming out at CES that would do um, different kinds of uh, thermal and some other sensors. Um, one of the things I'm interested in is doing uh, wetlands assessments, um, also looking at perhaps solar panel assessments or doing uh, wildlife surveys for some local game clubs. Uh, so didn't know what your thought was about uh, getting a different secondary drone where I could swap the sensor package off of and you've had any recommendations on that. Uh, thanks, guys, and keep up the good work. Thank you for the question. Appreciate it, guys. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Get that question in. Got a question for you, Rob. What's that? Is the Phantom 4 Pro a no-brainer? Well, the way that that's phrased, in the context of how we heard it... (laughs) He couldn't just answer the question. Well, no, because I don't have enough information to answer the question. Is the Phantom 4 Pro a no-brainer to buy if you're a drone pilot? You Really? (laughs) If I asked you that question, do you think you would just say yes or no? I would say yes. I don't think you would. <laughs> I would say yes in a heartbeat. I don't think you would. Hey, 1500 bucks for the same <laughs> sensor is an Inspire 2, and they're 1500 bucks. So if you're like me, you're like, I want to fly through a tree, and if we make it great, and if not, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better. And people wonder my mentality when I'm flying through obstacles. There you go. <laughs> That's half the battle is just being willing to risk it. No, no, no. no, I, no, no. Half no, the battle is telling your mind to not freak out and worry and think of the what ifs because as soon as you do, those things happen. Sure enough. That's true. No, no, no. I get what you're saying. And yeah, in, in that sense, it's a no brainer. But it also depends on what you're, what you're planning to do with your business. Right? True. I mean, it depends on what his plans are. My hunch is that just kind of based on... Where he's coming from, where he seems to be coming from with this question, probably a Phantom 4 Pro is a very, very good option. Well, I think so. But when it comes to interchangeable sensor platforms, obviously the Phantom 4 Pro is not going to be that answer. Yeah. So he was asking about perhaps getting an older drone. 
and, that, yeah, and that, making that work. Which uh, John McBride at Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems, free shameless plug, John McBride. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, he's done a lot for us. So uh, that being said, he has a M600 and an S1000, I believe, that have dual sensor packages. So if you really want to take this to the level of uh, a professional... Um, you know, platform, you can totally do that. I personally wouldn't do it until I had jobs lined up or at least relationships lined up where if I were to do the demo of said thing that I could then, you know, get jobs for it. I think the answer for him may be the Matrice 100, Rob. Hmm. Because, you know, he mentioned, hey, at CES or NEB, whatever it was, FLIR came out with a new camera, the FLIR Duo. Right. I'm just going to set this straight right now. You cannot do any commercial work with the FLIR Duo. None, because that's a big statement when you say you cannot do any. Is let there me just anything look, that you can do? Let me just look up the, the uh, what is it called, the sensor size. I'm pretty sure it's literally like 160 pixels. Um, and you're just not going to get the data necessary to make decisions off of the data. You're, it's so just, you're it's, not. it's like a weekend infrared for fun kind of camera? It's like a, if drone base did thermal roof inspections, you could use it for that. Hmm. But drone base doesn't do that. Right. So I, I, honestly, I don't know why they wouldn't. I think it would be really cool. Let's look at specifications. Okay. Thermal imager. I was right. 160 pixels by 120 pixels. A spectral band of 7.5 to 13.5. Hmm. So, and here's, okay, here's the tell-all right here. Ready? Thermal measurement accuracy plus or minus five degrees Celsius. That's too much. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? <laughs> in your pocket. Siri, what is five degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? The answer is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. 41 degrees. So freezing is 32, so that's what, 9 degrees? Differ differentiation, 9 degrees. Hmm. That's a lot. You're not making decisions off that data. You're not. So you're deciding whether to take up a more expensive camera <laughs> using this camera? You know, I if mean, you're what? really doing those thermal inspections and whatnot, like he's talking about, you need a camera that you can control while it's in the sky, and you need the XT. So, okay. you know, a lot of people are like, well okay, I'm going to get an XT, but I don't want to buy an Inspire 1 because then I can't upgrade my XT to an Inspire 2 or a Matrice 200. If you buy an XT with a Matrice 100 or you buy an XT period with an Inspire 1, DJI will give you the converter to go okay. to a Matrice 200 or an Inspire 2. But the XT is what, 8, 10 grand? Minimum. Minimum? Minimum. Okay. I think you're looking more like 14 grand. So you're a, you're a heavy-duty player. Yeah, but you're or do also you just have a lot of money. Well, the also the thing is, you know, you're making 5 grand for every commercial building that you're inspecting, right. but you're also providing a level data where you have to be certified again in um uh, what is it called? Uh infrared from the infrared um academy from FLIR because you again, you are making decisions that are going to affect people. Now, luckily, Luckily, we live in a day and age where our main doctor's population hasn't realized that there is a massive epidemic and problem with mold, even in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. If you're doing a thermal roof inspection, you want these differentiating, you know, sensor packages and whatnot. When you are telling people there are holes in the roof, and if you can't make an accurate uh, estimate as to how big that problem is, you could legitimately um, make a decision that affects someone's life for the next decade. What are the, what are the odds of that scenario? 40% of all the buildings in the United States are water damaged. Okay, 25% of all people are genomically susceptible to biotoxin or mold-related illness. The only reason I know these statistics, guys, is because I have been hired to produce another podcast talking about this exact issue. Right. And I've been educated for like the last, what is it now, Ilker, year or so on this subject. And it's a very real problem. Yeah. Like there was a basketball player uh, from Texas Christian University who like literally collapsed on the court and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him and it ended up being a mold. Wow. So like. I'm going to get my house tested. <sighs> Remember when we tested your house with oh, a yeah, thermal camera that. last time? <laughs> <laughs> and nothing's changed. 
Are you still missing some insulation, Rob? <laughs> yeah, I haven't been able to track down that builder. I'm going to find him, though. Oh, that is so funny, man. <laughs> so he also mentioned wetlands assessments. Uh huh. What do you even know what that's referring to? And, um, and if what? he wanted to use like a multispectral sensor, or if he wanted to use a hyperspectral sensor, or he wanted to use an NDVI camera, mm -hmm. um, wetlands assessment can be multiple things. It can be vegetation health index, like mm -hmm. that stuff that we were doing for the ranches, right? Which again is another huge government grant that's given out to property owners to and make I sure. I think especially true with wetlands. I mean, something that's they're very interested in protecting. Exactly. Yeah, they'll yeah. pay a lot of money per acre. For Interesting. That. So, um, what kind of a bird is he going to need to fly the right cameras to do that kind of work? Okay. So, after doing the said job, because we did this said job literally last week in Colorado, after doing that job and realizing how many days it took to get the data that we needed, and we still didn't collect all the data, I would get an M six hundred with a dual camera setup. Okay. That's why I'm so interested in the Matrice 210. Um, because we would be able to get an NDVI imager or use the XT and then use a high resolution EO camera mm -hmm. and get all the data that we needed, geotag the way that we needed it. And we would be collecting the same data at the same time. So our maps would overlay in ArcGIS really, really easily. So you're talking about a pretty serious setup there. You're talking about $25,000, $30,000 drone. Right. And More than my brand new truck. And so, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about vehicles right now. Is that because you're going to be getting one here soon? <laughs> not if I can help it. I've got a sticker for you. <laughs> you're not going to let me put one on my existing truck, huh? I'll let you. No, I'm just I would kidding. love to see a big <laughs> drone you sticker in the back middle of that windshield. I know. I'm, I'm just kidding. So I think the thinking process here with, with our question asker um, certainly appreciate the the vigor and and the enthusiasm, right, for getting into the business. But perhaps the kinds of things, and again, don't want to discourage people, but he might need to think bigger and and more resources to k get into some of these things. True, and he also, if he's doing like these wetlands inspection, how many acres is he going to be asked to do? Because, for example, we tried to map. Um, it was approximately 8,000 acres. Mm -hmm. We were out there for three days, and we maybe got 500. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so at really? what point do you ask yourself, when is a fixed wing, you know, the best answer? That, probably at that point. And so after the fly-in, <laughs> we're going to be doing another class with John McBride on said subject. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See, guys, this is why we talk about teaching from experience. That is not just a, a mantra, or it's not just a no. slogan. Anyways, all right, any other points for um, no. Christopher? I feel like you were you were headed there on a point, and then I totally just... No, uh, no, I think we're good. I distracted you. No, I mean, I hope that's helpful. I hope we then answered his questions. So, okay, let's summarize. FLIR Duo, not enough data for commercial usage. Looking for a multi-sensor platform right now without the M210 really being out, tested, proven, M100 to M600 to S1000 is going to be your best bet. Again, depending on how many acres you're going to be doing, when we tried doing this, we did it all with quadcopters and it took a really long time. Does that mean it's doable? Yes. It's just going to be a lot of work. It's not going to be worth your money as far as money is concerned. So, you know, you need to ask yourself, how big of an area are you going to be mapping? Yeah. Um, and then ask yourself, well, should I use a fixed wing? And the answer is probably going to be yes. So as far as what is the best fixed wing, I'm sure some people are thinking that. We are still trying to figure that out because we have seen some custom planes um, that have done really, really good work, like the Bixler. Um, and then there are also other platforms, like, for example, Precision Hawks aircraft is just a Lancaster. Mm -hmm. 1500 buck model that they've just kind of changed up a little bit. And you could probably do a lot with that thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we've got some, we've got some testing to do. And because I'm a little crazy, I was like, I think we should get a Reaper drone kit and turn that into our fixed wing mapper. Hmm. Because how cool would it be to pull a freaking Reaper out of your car and be like, <laughs> this is what we're flying on your ranch. And then some guy's like, oh. Uh. <laughs> so uh, how like, much would a Reaper set us back? Actually, only a couple hundred bucks. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, heck, I want. Let's get two. 
<laughs> they have huge wingspans, though. I mean, we were literally talking like 100 inches. So. <laughs> well, you just put it on top of the car then. <laughs> <laughs> and just start going and be like, okay, lift off. Clip. There you go. Exactly. Get Some the sort of release mechanism. <laughs> I could see their quick launch guide right there now. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Set this up to your roof rack. <laughs> Drive to 25 miles an hour. Press the release button and watch it fly away. Sounds pretty easy. Let's do it. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us today. That was a fun one, Rob. Thank you very much for listening. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload it. If this information seemed valuable, informative, or maybe you want to elevate someone else's drone flying experience, share the podcast with them. You can do that on iTunes, Overcast, Podomatic, wherever you listen to shows. Anyway, guys, thank you again. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.